Good afternoon. Welcome back to our in-person meetings. I want to call the uh, meeting of the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation uh, to order. Today is Tuesday, March 4th, 2021 want to acknowledge the presence of two former Parks Board members, Dr. Joanne Brannan, welcome, and Mr. Arnett Bodenhammer, welcome. We're gonna move now to the appeal of decisions pursuant to the provisions of 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Please take notice that decisions of the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation may be appealed to the Chancery Court of Davidson County for review under a common law writ of certiorari. Any appeal must be filed within 60 days after entry of a final decision by the board. Any person or other entity considering an appeal should consult with an attorney to ensure that time and procedural requirements are met. We will now move to the consideration of minutes. Have you had an opportunity to read the minutes? Commissioners, is there uh, a motion for approval? So moved. Uh, is there a second? Second. Uh, is there any discussion of the minutes? It has been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. We'll move now to Metro Council referrals. Di Director Odom, are there any referrals from council members present? Council member, sorry that. Uh, council member at large, uh, Sharon Hurd is here and would like to be heard. Good morning. to come and serve as representative of the Minority Caucus. It is said, the third time is the charm. I came before you on October 6, 2020, March 2, 2021, and now today. I shared that the park's name should be changed to the Freedom Riders, then Kwame Lillard, respectively, and today, I have the perfect opportunity and solution for what seemed to have been an irresolvable problem. Today's Tennessean headlines read, Reviving Justice, How the Freedom Riders Movement Shaped Future Movements. That headlining is so befitting as we must use our past as a catalyst for our future. It must be a seamless process, very much like Oracle is bringing technology to Nashville for our future. We must bring the voices of our community together and be intentional about acting upon them. I heard from Rashida Fatuga of Gideon's Army, Kwame's daughter, Jessica, and Sandra Brown, who was a longtime friend and mentee who are all very passionate and convinced that Kwame's name should not be forgotten and his good works should be honored by renaming the park. I heard first from Mr. Arnett Bodenhammer, then I heard from Ms. Ann Brooks, a friend of the family who gave an historical fact about the family and shared her thoughts of not changing the name. However, she heard my thoughts and suggested we find common ground. And last and certainly not least, I had an extensive conversation with Ms. Catherine Plummer, a descendant of Dr. Hatley. I've known her for over 20 years and worked with her on several projects, who at first asked that the name not be changed. I shared with her my new option, and she agreed. Then I listened to my heart, the heart that knows Nashville is on the cutting edge of many things, but first well positioned to bring diversity into the fold, from old to new, black to white, rich to poor. Today, it's in your hands to blaze the trail for Nashville community at large to follow your lead. Show how diversity can and must work. 
Please vote to rename Hadley Park to Hadley Lillard Park. Thank you so much. I apologize, I've got to leave and I won't be here, but I've got a meeting with the mayor. So thank you very much for your time and God bless you. Thank you so much for your time, Councilwoman Hurt. We appreciate your words. We're going to- Let me just thank all of the people who have responded to emails and have come out today and share all of their concerns and their thoughts and and, and, and their feelings about this situation. Thank Absolutely. You. Absolutely. Thank you. We're going to move now to old business 04-21-03, staff requesting approval in concept of an agreement for grant of easement for conservation greenway between the Metro Sports Authority and Metro government on property owned by the Sports Authority located at First Horizon Park, 19 Junior Gillum Way on parcel number 0821 Three zero four zero four zero zero, and the partial realignment and separation of the existing greenway by Portman Residential LLC. The developer of the adjacent property located at 03rd Avenue North such that the greenway will remain open daily to the public and a portion will be maintained permanently by the owners of the 03rd Avenue North property. The acquisition committee met this morning. Jeff Haynes is here, Commissioner Jeff Haynes is here. Um, to uh, give a report from the committee. Our committee met and recommends approval. Thank you so much. Are there any additional questions from our board? Seeing none, I will accept a motion. Accept a motion. For, um, sorry, <laughs> I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you, thank you so much. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion passes. Thank you all so much. Con moving now to the consent agenda, we'll move now um, to accept. Well, I will accept a motion to uh, accept the consent agenda in its entire in, in its entirety. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you so much. Is there a second? Second. All those in. Fa are, is there any discussion? We're back in person, and I'm forgetting a step. Okay. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Any opposed? The motion passes. Thank you all so much. We're moving now to new business, 05-21-03, Friends of Shelby Park and Bottoms request board approval of an in-kind grant for improvements to the Shelby Community Center basketball courts with an estimated total value of $10,000. No money will be donated to Metro Parks. Projects will be paid for directly by Friends of Shelby with no match needed from, from Metro Parks. Director Odom, is there a staff recommendation? Staff recommends approval. Thank you so much. Uh, is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. 05-21-04, Park Police requests board approval of an agreement to provide law enforcement patrols to the Percy Priest Lake Recreation Areas on an extra duty basis. The fees are our standard $42 per hour for hiring officers off duty. Since we are using our vehicles in these patrols, we have added a surcharge of $4.50 per hour to cover the expense of using the vehicles, mileage, gas, insurance, etc. With that surcharge, we will be invoicing a total amount of $46.50 per hour. If approved, this agreement will be effective May 1st, 2021. Director Odom, is there a staff recommendation? Staff recommends approval. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Thank you so much. Is there a second? Second. It has been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion, any questions regarding this? Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Um, so I understand that we're being asked to approve a, an hourly rate, what I, but, it, but it says to provide law enforcement patrols on an extra duty basis. Is this, um, it's hard to know the hourly rate if we don't know how many hours. So I was curious, is this a, I, I just didn't quite have enough information to understand. It falls under a fee for the parks for our system. Is Captain Howie here mm -hmm. to answer? Thank you. Did you come to the podium. Oh, 
Sergeant Irv, Irvin is here too. Lieutenant Irvin, sorry. Would you repeat your question, please? Hello. Okay. Um, I was curious about the usage, uh, how often this would be used, or what the impact beyond the 420, 4, uh, 450 per hour would be. Just is this a lot more that's needed, or no? And this is a contractual agreement with uh, the folks with the Corps of Engineers, and so this is what the officers will do when they're off duty. So it's an extra job for them, and uh, their shifts will be. Um, depending upon what the request is, but it's a weekend uh, providing protection, law enforcement duties there at the park, but it does not impact uh, what the regular duty officers are doing. And so the build amount would be depending upon how many hours. And so they're making a request and sometimes it's a minimum of four up to eight hours per shift, but it's dependent upon what happens there uh, at that center. Okay, that's completely different than what I thought, but thank you for explaining it. I got it now. <laughs> All right, good, thank you. And I had a follow-up question. So I'm a little unclear now um, uh, based on what you've said. So it sounds like some of the, um, the f uh, invoicing would go to pay the individuals, but is some going to be paid to the park for the use of the vehicle? That's correct. So uh, there's a build amount that does pay for the officers for their time to be there. And then the additional $4 and whatever per vehicle covers the expense of that vehicle. So this is not anything different than what the park officers have done before. In the uh, Metro Police Department, there's a, a unit that covers this off-duty officers anyone can hire. And so the uh, cost of the officer is covered through a direct bill. And then any expense for the vehicle or that type of thing is covered under the $4 and however many cents that was per hour for usage. Got it. And this might be a follow-up question for... Um, Director Odom, but do, <clears throat> do the funds stay within the Parks Department? I hope they are. They do. They're, they're, they go to a revenue fund, special revenue fund. So, yeah, it would cover the, the expense. It would cover the expense. The revenue would cover the expense. Good. Yes. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Thank you. Are there any additional questions or discussion? I'll accept a motion. I think we did that. Where are they at? Where are they at? <clears throat> oh, y'all. We have a second. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. Thank you all so much. Give me an order. 05-21-05 staff request, request board approval to amend park policy 3000.13C1. Restrictions on model aircraft boats. Opening hours from 8 a.m. to dawn. Current policy states permittee may operate model aircraft boats at the following sites during the designated scheduled hours. 3000.13, restrictions on model aircraft boats. One, aircraft. Cane Ridge Park, 8 a.m. to dusk daily. Peeler, Peeler Park, 8 a.m. to dusk daily. Edwin Warner Park, March through November, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. December, January, and February, Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. until dusk. Sundays, 12 noon until dusk. Director Odom, are there any comments from the staff? Yes, John Holmes. John Holmes, if you would come and give a little background on this request, please. We received a request from one of the flyers out there based on his schedule, he wanted to be able to fly early in the morning before he go into work. Um, the policy specifically does not allow air uh, gas engines, so the noise is not really a big issue, and none of the fields are very close to residential, so we saw no impact on uh, the residents. And when we talked to the fo folks at Warner in particular, they saw no issue, so we supported this policy change. And so this is just, in essence, changing 8 a.m. to dawn. So it would read dawn so to dusk for hours. Correct. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay. Yeah, yeah I do. Mm -hmm. I'm a little unclear. So are the, is it the Warner Parks that is separating out the March through November, or is that applied to the others? No, ma'am. Anywhere where it says 8 a.m., we're changing it to dusk, or, or dawn, excuse me. So anywhere in the policy, and the policy is actually, I think on the, your next page, the entire policy is listed on the report, um, and it lists the, anywhere where you see 8 a.m., it would be changed to dawn. But So all three air model fields. 
Okay, so, and, and the seasonal <clears throat> part, does that apply to Cane Ridge and Peeler? No, at uh, Warner, because of the sports fields, they have a very specific schedule that they can fly there certain days. The other fields are, it's the same any year round. But at uh, Warner, because of the different activities that can occur out there in the wintertime, they get full use in the spring, summer, and f early fall because of soccer and baseball, they can't, they're not allowed to fly. I, 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 in looking at this policy, it made me look at the overall policy, and I was surprised to see that so many of our parks uh, have a policy of closing at, at 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. There's lots that are dawn to dusk, but then lots that are 11. So I guess I, I, it was causing me to think about, um, you know, obviously because of this particular agenda item, but I, I don't have a sense of why we pick these certain times. So it might be helpful for you to give us a little bit more context about the closing time as well. I'm not 100% sure I can. I think it's an evolution of what has occurred over the years. Um, it also is dependent on the location, the use. There's a lot of different factors for each different field, uh, or each different park. Um, and we've had parks in recent years that someone has come before the board and said, can we change the hours? So I think it has changed occasionally. Um, and if there's ever an issue to do so, we'll be glad to review it and look at it. But it's, it's basically those factors, what goes on in the park that impacts whether it closes at dusk or whether it closes at 11. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you so much. The motion passes. We'll move now to capital projects update with Tim Nash. Hello. Good to see you all in person. Um, so in your packet is the is the standard one sheet uh, projects uh, project update. Um, for Atafama Archaeological uh, Site, we're in the process of uh, construction contract negotiations. Uh, at the Centennial Children's Memory Garden, um, we're in the same phase. Um, co construction contract negotiations um, are to be scheduled uh, within, the, within the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Centennial Park Phase 2, that's the construction project that has been underway for some time. As we speak, the contractor is removing the fencing from the East LA, so that will be open um, for use by the craft fair this weekend and will remain open. Uh, and then the remainder of the project will, will be finished up um, yet this spring. So we're, we're reaching the, the finish line on that. Uh, the Elmington Tennis Courts refurb project, uh, construction contract negotiations uh, have been completed and uh, procurement should be uh, releasing us to move forward on, on that project very soon. At Fort Negley, uh, we are in the middle of planning contract negotiations and that uh, planning team uh, should be providing us with a pricing proposal, um, hopefully by the end of this week. Uh, the Hadley Pavilion project uh, construction should start uh, within the week. Uh, we are going to have to um, uh, have a contract amendment, so it remains to be seen whether we're going to have to hold off on start um, until that contract amendment is executed. For Mill Ridge Park and Ravenwood uh, Parks, uh, a construction contract has been awarded on both of those. It's one contract for both projects, and we held a kickoff meeting yesterday, so they should be mobilizing um, within the next few weeks. Um, there are some uh, remaining permitting issues to confirm um, before they can actually get started on each site. Um, Severe Park Sunnyside Mansion restoration. Um, uh, this morning we sat down with the design team and had a page turn on the draft construction documents. So we're reaching the end of the uh, design phase um, and then we'll get it in the queue for construction, uh, uh, construction RFP. 
And then we've restarted Wharf Park, um, and we're in the process of scheduling meetings with various stakeholder groups within the next month or so. And then we will launch the public engagement phase this summer uh, in uh, July or early August. And that concludes my report. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Tim, quick question on Fort Negley. Assuming the master plan negotiations are finalized, how long will that master plan take approximately to complete? It'll be about a 12-month 12, 12 process. And then, then the hope is immediately thereafter to try to go into some type of fundraising or to immediately go into construction? Um, any any future implementation phase would be depending on the availability of funds so that is to be determined but there there are there are there are um, is a partner committee that's working on private fundraising thank you I've got a follow-up question um, the your comment about the Hadley d delay was that anything to do with name change or signage or anything related to no, no it's not know. related to that although before we sign off on the um, the uh, final submittals and shop drawings on the sign we will definitely need to make sure that they reflect whatever whatever name the park uh, may have at that time yeah okay good thanks for clarifying thank you Thank you so much. We'll move now to upcoming special activities and events with Jackie Jones. Yes, thank you. Everybody is excited about being back outdoors, including Metro Parks, and we have a variety of events. If you'll notice on your sheet that's attached to the back of your agendas, there is a second sheet beside your desk. That's the most accurate sheet. So just to give you a feel for a little bit of what we have going on, and we have a lot going on, uh, we have farmer's markets scheduled throughout the city, specifically at 12 South, Bellevue, Richland, and Two Rivers Park. We have the Tennessee Crafts Fair. Uh, that's scheduled for this Friday, May 7th, and it's running through Sunday. We have Jazz on the Cumberland. It returns on Sunday, May 9th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. at Cumberland Park. Cornelia Fort Picking Party is back at Shelby Park. The Full Moon Picking Party is back at Percy Warner Park on May 21st. And we have the Music City BMX Nationals, and uh, they're scheduled at Hamilton Creek Park on May 25th. And we also have a newsletter that's coming out this afternoon, so I hope you'll take the time to read it. That concludes my report. So the BMX... Y'all see what I'm interested in. It begins at 6 a.m.? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's what's on our calendar, so. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> we'll make a note of that for my son. Thank you so much, uh, Jackie. Report of the director. Director Odom. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, everybody. I'm ex as excited as everyone else to be back in person. Um, I'd like to happily acknowledge that our own uh, Dr. Michelle Steele has been reappointed to the Parks Board uh, for another term. Thank you to, to Mayor Cooper for that. Her term will end um, in 2026, and we'll have an affirmation by the Parks Board on the next agenda. Um, the mayor's FY22 recommended uh, budget has been filed, and I am also happy to note on that that Improvements for our department um, include um, an expansion to the disabilities program, the restoration of some positions that were eliminated this year um, in maintenance and other areas of the department, increased staffing at golf courses, community centers, uh, increased staffing to expand community sports programming, uh, increased staffing at the sportsplex, nature centers, parks police, and some administrative improvements and funding for operational uh, resources. So our next step in this budget consideration process is our uh, council budget hearing, which I'll remind you again is at 4 p.m. on May 20th. Uh, I'm certain that'll be in person and very likely at the Music City Center, but I'll follow up as I um, get more details about that to make you aware. Uh, we have been receiving steady input um, 
about the uh, renaming of Hadley Park request. I just wanted to remind you all that the community meeting regarding that renaming request is tomorrow evening at Hadley Regional Community Center at 6 p.m. Um, and then the formal um, public input period ends at 4.30 on Wednesday, May 18th. Uh, Sign-ups for our summer enrichment program at community centers uh, was this past Saturday. Uh, we are excited to be gearing up to have in-person programming there. Um, our big band dance and summer concerts are planning for a safe return to in-person with um, the announcement of no capacity restrictions. Um, the Centennial Youth Ballet presented Ballet on the Waterfront this past Saturday at Cumberland Park Amphitheater. It was awesome. It was wonderful. People were definitely excited to be out. Um, and um, the, the ballet company was excited to perform in front of a live audience. So kudos to Katherine Wilkening, who leads our dance programming. And uh, we appreciate her hard work and dedication. Uh, planning is underway for the 50th anniversary of the Centennial Arts Center. Um, that'll be next year. Um, and we will uh, kind of acknowledge that the, um, the Arts Center itself and the history of that location. As you all know, it, it did used to be a swimming pool. And so we will acknowledge that as well. Um, Church Street Park will reopen on June 3rd. Um, as I shared with you all, the Civic Design Center will be working with us to um, facilitate input from stakeholders about park improvements uh, beginning in June. Um, I hope you received that timeline that I sent you. Uh, our Consolidated Maintenance Division remains busy preparing facilities for seasonal activities, attending to deferred maintenance projects, routine operations work, and still flood cleanup and repair from the March 2021 flood. Um, our disabilities program is operating in person, both indoor and outdoor activities. Our revenue producing facilities are up and running. Wave Country is preparing to open Memorial Day weekend. Our trails, parks, and outdoor recreation uh, areas are increasing in activities. I will say again, people are excited to be in person and outdoors, particularly when the weather is uh, favorable. Um, I will um, mention that, as you all recall, Stan Fossick, uh, was, uh, his term ended on our board, and he had uh, said that he wanted to wait until we were in person again to, for us to acknowledge his service to the Parks Board and to the city, and so I'll be reaching out to him to coordinate when he can be here with us in person, and we can give him his special honor. Um, that is all I have. Uh, for my report. Do you have any questions? Anybody? Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll move now to announcements, requests for future agenda items and open items. I have one. Mm -hmm. um, so I am uh, chairing the finance committee, which is a committee of all of us, of all the board. Um, and uh, I've been working with um, a great team of staff members at um, um, the parks in the parks department, um, uh, Chinita White, the finance director, and Mary Peoples, right here. We had a good meeting yesterday, and we're we're working on some recommendations. I'll remind you that we, that we brought the audit to you about the uh, support groups and how they report their activities to the parks board. So we're going to be bringing some recommendations at the next meeting, and um, just we'll give we'll get them. Um, out to you ahead of time, but just wanted to give you that heads up that we're tweaking things to make them a little more um, streamlined. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll move now to public input. Was there any other? I apologize. Announcements, requests for future agenda items or open items. We'll move now to our public input period regarding 03-21-02. Ms. Sharon W. Hurt, President of Metropolitan Minority Caucus, requests the board to rename Hadley Park to Kwame Leo Lillard Park. A note, as Councilwoman Hurt indicated at the top of our meeting, an amendment to the request, requested proposed name be made to um, Hadley Lillard Park. If there are citizens that would like to speak into this issue, please step to the microphone, state your name and address. You have a maximum of three minutes to speak. Thank you. 
My name is Arnett H. Bodenhammer. I live at 2900 Starboard Drive in Edgefield. The wind has blown for some of us in many directions. Uh, we haven't caught up with it, and people are trying to catch up with different things. The first time I appeared before you to change this name of Hadley Park was to Malcolm X Park, and that was denied. I have, I'm 88 years old. Hadley Park means more to me than most of you can remember. It was a daycare for my mom because that's where we could go to play. That's where we could go and learn various things at the big house, uh, one of probably the best recreation uh, development. The person we had, a name named Miss Wilpaul, that taught us so many things at Hadley Park. We learned so much at Hadley Park. Hadley Park has not been a problem to anybody. Nothing has happened in Hadley Park that we should change the name. It's been rumored that you wanted to change the name because a slave owner owned it. Well, who in the hell owned other than slaves and white folks in 1912? I mean, let's be serious about it. If we take those two dates, John Hadley gave Hadley Park 29 acres of land for his slaves. In addition to that, in addition, he gave 20 acres to you who else, know who else uh, developed in 1912? Tennessee State University, check the record out. We need to understand what this man did for black folks and what it benefited us. And I'm one of those that's still living. Most of my generation have gone on. But to do that, to change the name of this park makes no sense. 36 black kids have killed themselves with guns this year, and here we are talking about change the name of a park that has caused no problem. We need to be trying to find out how to stop killing black kids. Ku Klux Klan doesn't need anymore. They're taking care of it. Let's get serious about what's going on. If you want to change something to do away with people who are Federates, let's start with avenues and streets in Nashville. Name the Mumbrim Street something. Name Church Street something. Name Fifth Avenue more than a third of John Lewis. Name Charlotte more than a third of Martin Luther King. There's so many things that we can do to recognize black folks. Here's a white man that gave me something. He gave my grandchildren something. We are here to see that. It's been so much, so much for Hadley Park. If you grew up in Nashville, you attended Hadley Park. If you went to Tennessee State University, you went to Hadley Park. There was no other place for you to go. There was Watkins Park, which was the first black park in Nashville. It had very little. When they came to uh, Hadley Park, and that's the way, way we used to refer to it, was the park. Hell, I don't know when I knew it was Hadley. All Thank I ever knew was park. That's Mr. what we talked about. Mr. Mr. Bodenhammer, we have you. We recorded your uh, vote for it. We thank you so much for your time. It's been three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Joanne Brannon. I live at 5444 San Marcos Drive, Nashville, Tennessee, 37220. Thank you for this opportunity. I stand before you today in opposition of the name change and in light of the amendment that was proposed this morning. For 109 years, Hadley Park has been the health and wellness hub with numerous activities, clubs, festivals, concerts, 
that were designed around the needs of the community, the city, and the counties that surround us. It has been enjoyed by citizens from all walks of life. It is the first park in the United States specifically dedicated for the use by African Americans. The name is well known. It's recognized and remembered by local citizens, former students, and athletes around the world because of their proximity to TSU, Fisk, and Meharry. It's also remembered by competitors of other HBCUs who competed on the collegiate baseball field, which is now part of the tennis center. I recall the stiff competition between TSU and Central State University in Wilberforce, Ohio, who played here. Hadley has also been a lighthouse for tennis players across the county, the country, and globally. The Hadley Park Junior Development Program is recognized by the ATA, the USTA, and it has been a training program that has benefited numerous participants who gained college scholarships. Some have become tennis pros, instructors, university coaches, and some have even played on the semi-pro circuit. Three years ago, Hadley Tennis Center received an upgrade grant for $65,000. In 1953, three gentlemen, Mr. James Watkins, Dr. E.P. Crump, and Dr. Ralph Cazort, founded the Hadley Park Tennis Club that remains in existence today with 69 members. Mr. Watkins was a local teacher who provided instruction of the game of tennis, conducted inter-club tournaments, and before students knew it, he had entered them in citywide tournaments. The club continues competition with clubs surrounding us in counties and states. Please preserve the legacy of these men. As Councilwoman Hurt mentioned this morning, this is the third attempt in recent years to rename the historic park. And while I believe the form of recognition is in order for the activists, who by the way had also been a part of the tennis club. I think that the name should not be changed. And as Councilwoman Hurt mentioned, it would be a grave injustice to the family of Dr. W.A. Hadley, uh, who was a friend of the director in 1912. A change will not enhance the park, but it will rather negate the historical relevance. Hadley Park is recognized globally. I oppose a name change. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak to you today. Um, my name is Gary Burke. I'm a native of Nashville. I live at 2706 Glen Rose Avenue. And I'm the great-great-grandson of Private Peter Bailey, a veteran of the Battle of Nashville, December 15, 16, 1864. I was original board member at Historic Fort Negley and presently serve on their fundraising committee with Kix Brooks. I met Kwame Leo Lillard at Fort Negley in the early 2000s as a Civil War reenactor at the site. He asked me to join him at the African Street Festival, which he founded in the 1980s, uh, to share the history of the U.S. Colored Troops. From there, Kwame had me join him at the Nashville Veterans Cemetery each December to honor the colored troops buried there. Later, as Fort Negley was under threat from developers, I joined Kwame speaking at community groups about Fort Negley. He was a passionate about preserving the legacy of the forgotten soldiers. Kwame was always engaging young people and learning their history. I traveled to Selma, Alabama during the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday with him and a, a busload of young people. 
I would run to Kwame around Nashville while he would give a tour, and he would always ask me to speak to them about the U.S. colored troops. We shared this rich history at TSU, Vanderbilt, and the African Street Festival again that he founded. Kwame was my teacher, mentor, and friend. He was born in Florida and became a Nashville treasure. He was a freedom writer, teacher, activist, mentor, and friend. And so I propose, as Councilwoman Sharon Hurt uh, amended about having the name changed to Hadley Lillard Park. In closing, I'll, I'll share a, a short story. I was at the state capitol several years ago when the late Congressman John Lewis was being honored there, and Kwame was in attendance. And while Congressman uh, Lewis was speaking, he stopped in mid-sentence and pointed at Kwame and said, Kwame was the man who picked us up at the Alabama-Tennessee line when Bull Connor let them out uh, during the Civil Rights Movement. So Kwame has always been a servant to Nashville and to the world. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments from our participants? Okay, so we will pick up with a uh, public input, our public input period again tomorrow, Wednesday at 6 p.m. at Hadley Park Community Center. Um, we will be uh, engaging our um, community uh, to continue this conversation before the board votes. Thank you all again for being here. We appreciate it. Yes. Que question real quickly for legal counsel. Given the late breaking name change suggestion, does that alter in any way the public notice that we sit out for tomorrow night? I want to make sure that we're following every legal T, et cetera. We may need to do another public input hearing because this is coming so late. We may need to add another one. That would be my recommendation. Thank you. But to still go forward with the meeting tomorrow to cancel. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Thank you all again so much for being here. I'll accept a motion for adjournment. Is there a second? Sure, second. <laughs> <laughs> We're adjourned. I forgot to hit that at the top I think of the we saved. I think we saved a lot of time by not having the roll call. <laughs> <laughs>